vibes. So we have some interesting vibes coming through this week. We've got a busy week of astrology playing out. First of all, we have Mercury going retrograde this week. We also have our full moon in Pisces happening this week. And to start our week this week, we have Venus moving into the sign of Virgo. This is setting up an interesting dynamic because currently we have Mercury, who's the ruler of Virgo in the sign of Libra, which is ruled by Venus. So this is setting up a mutual reception dynamic between Venus and Mercury. And I can tell you guys right now with Mercury also going retrograde this week, starting now, moving through the next couple weeks, moving through Mercury's retrograde period with this mutual reception going on, we are really going to be reconsidering, reprioritizing, reevaluating what it is we want, what it is we desire, what it is we value. This is really sort of what is going to be on the table, what we're thinking about and what we're talking about over the course of this next couple weeks. To start our week this week on Monday as well, we also have a Capricorn moon going on, making a bunch of aspects. First of all, this is triggering and activating that black moon energy, fears, worries, insecurities, doubts may be surfacing. This is also creating a T-square in the sky between Mercury in Libra, Jupiter in Aries. So there may be some tension, some friction that we are dealing with today. But the moon in Capricorn is also, you guys, forming a trine to the sun and is also moving into trine with the North Node and Uranus. So this is actually harmonizing things and facilitating things and helping things to fall into place and to rearrange themselves in a better way like ultimately somehow. So despite a little bit of the more trickier vibes or some shadows we may be navigating today, ultimately things are working for our best interests. So let's get into this chart, you guys. Let's talk about what we have going on to open our week, to start our day today and what it might be looking like for us on the ground. Welcome back to my channel, everybody. Today is Monday, September 5th, 2022. My name is Aubrey, and this is your astrological outlook of the day. If you guys stick with me till the end of the report, we're also going to be talking about some tarot cards that came out in correspondence to the astrology today, just to sort of tap the field from more than one perspective, from more than one uh, energetic modality, and just sort of try to get a better overall read. So let's start with the astrology, though, as we always do, you guys. Yes. We are entering a period of Venus Mercury mutual reception. Like I said, today, one of the big things that we have going on today, aside from the black moon energy, we are in black moon energy, although, you know, the trine to the sun, like I do feel like it's being tempered to some extent, but we may still be navigating some black moon issues, which I'll talk about in a little bit. But first, I want to start by talking about today being the day that Venus is moving into the sign of Virgo this year, which is putting what is called Mercury and Venus into a mutual reception. Virgo is ruled by Mercury. Mercury currently right now is in the sign of Libra, which is ruled by Venus. So Venus is now transiting Mercury sign and Mercury is transiting Venus is sign. Mercury is actually stationing retrograde this week on the 9th and will be retrograding back out of Libra and back into his sign of Virgo. So, I mean, a Mercury retrograde period, you guys, this is always a period of reconsideration, like um, reevaluation, just going over things again, adjustments. Like, it's sort of where we look at where we're at right now and sort of go through any type of recalibrations or reconsideration or like I said, like reevaluation or just adjustments that need to be made to our plans or to our ideas or to our thoughts. Mercury retrograde can also bring things back from the past. And we will be talking more about Mercury retrograde as we head towards the ninth, which is the day where Mercury goes retrograde. But today, really, the name of the game is all about this Venus um, Mercury energy. But the fact that Mercury is also going to be stationed to go retrograde during this mutual reception of Venus and Mercury is letting me know that that, like I said in my intro, this period of time coming up, starting this week, moving throughout the next couple weeks, basically the duration of Mercury's retrograde period is about helping us to reconsider, reevaluate what it is that we really want. Because we're talking about Venus, you guys. Venus rules our desires, our what we what we want, what makes us feel comfortable, like what gives us pleasure. It's also our relationships. It's also our finances. It's also our personal level of like abundance and material comfort and material like stability and stuff like that. And when we have Venus coming into a mutual reception with Mercury, which rules our mind and our thoughts and what we're talking about, what we're thinking about going retrograde, this is definitely like we're 
I can tell you right now, there's a very strong possibility that over this next few weeks, our mind is very much so likely to be pretty dominated by just this, this reprioritization process or reevaluating what it is that we do value, what it is that we do desire, the type of people that we do want to connect to and relate to, the relationship dynamics that we want to be involved in. This is just um, some type of necessary re whatever reevaluation reconsideration um rediscovery like any of the re words in regards to really getting in touch with what it is that we genuinely want with the retrograde energy this could also like i said definitely be bringing up things people relationships connections from the past because of Mercury's retrograde process may be coming up for some type of reevaluation, reconsideration about things. But by the time that we get done with this Venus Mercury um, fusion energy and Mercury's retrograde process, I'm telling you guys right now, we are going to have a much greater understanding of the truth of, you know, our heart essentially and what really fills us up on an emotional level and what it is that we really truly need to like thrive and to just experience what really brings us that level of fulfillment in our relationship connections in our material world and in the way that we are just uh, like our social groups in the context of the various dynamics of the relationship components, the partnerships as well, the financial dynamics of our lives. So that is where this energy is going starting today and over this next couple of weeks, entire retrograde about reconsidering what it is that we want. Also with Venus and Mercury being in this um, mutual reception together and Venus being in the sign of Virgo specifically, I do also feel like this may be a time of some more introverted energy, desiring some time to think more, like to be maybe being a bit more withdrawn, maybe like actually wanting Venus to be in a bit of a more hermit mode over this next couple of weeks, thinking about, talking about, really just like mulling over in our mind what we want and also reevaluating our plans kind of like for the future based on this as well. We are in a retrograde season right now, you guys. We have like so we have more planets retrograde than not. We have Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, Pluto, Chiron, all retrograde and Mercury about to go retrograde this week too in mutual reception to Venus while Venus is actually ruling the Virgo cycle that we are in right now because Mercury who rules Virgo is in Venus's sign. So that really gives her a lot of power in this situation that we are in right now. And then in the mutual reception with Mercury as well, there is just this blending going on. There's this fusion going on and we, uh, are just in a contemplation period, you guys, right now. And if you're feeling like, you know, maybe a desire to be a bit more withdrawn or like you really just need to process some things, you are probably right on par with what is playing out in the energy right now. And that is sort of just the vibe, like this Virgo, Venus. This is also like details, plans, schedules. This is wanting to really sort of um, refine things as well, like maybe in our home environment or just like beautify our living space or also, so, um, maybe like in terms of our day to day, like our schedule and what we're doing on a day to day basis, like find some ways that we can just enjoy our, our general day to day a little bit more. These are the Venus Virgo type vibes, but this is definitely like a more, um, enjoying the finer things in life as well. This is not so much like, uh, frivolous, like desires and wants and enjoyment. This is like, um, yeah, like really reprioritizing what it is that we like really desire from a very much more like practical mindset, practical point of view as well with the Virgo energy and the mutual reception going on. So, you know, this is going to be, I feel like kind of an interesting vibe that we're dealing in over these next couple of weeks as we're sort of getting like re-rooted in ourselves essentially and sort of like getting down to earth within our own value systems and what we truly prioritize and just like, you know, what we want. That is what we are discovering over this week. Now, moving on, Venus, Mercury, mutual reception, all that business. We talked about that. Let's talk about the fact that we are in Black Moon energy again today. Black Moon and Cancer. The Black Moon is currently in the sign of Cancer. Whenever the Moon comes into Capricorn or Cancer, 
this is activating these black moon issues because the black moon works in polarities and the black moon rules our shadow sides, our fears, our worries, our insecurities, our doubts, but um, in a way that we don't even necessarily recognize <laughs> that they're like having an impact on us or that they really even exist. This has a lot to do with our subconscious programming and the various aspects of our psyche that have very powerful and dominant force or very powerful and dominant force over our actual experience, but we don't realize is sort of like the motor behind it all. A lot of times it's like what is happening in the background of our own algorithm of our own psyche that is sort of triggering us in various ways and when we have the black moon energy and the sign of cancer being triggered this cancer is a sign of the mother it's the home it's the family it's where we feel secure it's like our sense of security and safety and um, our ability to feel accepted and to receive and give like nurturing and love and care for ourselves and others and also um because of that, it, it brings us to a place where we feel like we are worthy of attaining some type of success or recognition in the world, uh, opposing the Capricorn, Cancer and Capricorn, the axis, the dynamic between these two polarities. But when the Black Moon and Cancer is being triggered, a lot of times this can bring up issues or fears, worries, insecurities, doubts in terms of our own sense of safety or security within the home, within the family, within the community, our own level of being supported or ability to give support or acceptance or ability to receive or give love, nurturing care. A lot of times um, it can bring up like subconscious issues within ourselves and like fears of inability uh, or fears of whether or not we can care for ourselves, whether or not we can care for others. And it has a tendency to cause us to project a lot of times as well and can bring up feelings of like neediness and codependency and self entitlement and, uh, just these type of various issues, but primarily also like these fears, worries, insecurities, and doubts about our own sense of security, safety, and acceptance essentially into the family of the group. It can also bring up issues relating to the mother, relating to the family, stuff like that as well. And so that may be something that we are just navigating, maybe some self doubt, maybe uh, just a, sh a little bit of our faith shaken in ourselves, perhaps in one way or another. In this energy, we may be doubting ourselves or ideas today. And the thing is the moon in Capricorn, aside from activating the black moon, it's also setting up an exact T square today between Mercury and Jupiter. Mercury in the sign of Libra and Jupiter in the sign of Aries. These are cardinal signs. So we've got a cardinal T-square going on between the moon and Capricorn, Mercury and Jupiter in opposition in Libra and Aries. So, you know, Jupiter and uh, Mercury in opposition in Libra and Aries, this is, this is actually like really, really like expanding our mind and can give us a bit of a big mouth, maybe like making some like really big ideas, like really overblown like expressions and stuff like that. And with the moon in the sign of Capricorn forming the square, this is saying we may feel like repressed or unsupported or held back emotionally in some type of a way from either being able to like say what's on our mind or, you know, we could receive some really like um, strong criticism or judgment either like internally within ourselves or from people in the world around us in terms of our ideas or the progress that we're making at this point in time could also be bringing up issues in regards to like freedom of speech and our ability to actually speak our mind and to say what we're feeling and to say what we're thinking um, with a th and also in regards to authority in some type of a way. Like we could get in trouble in this energy for having too much of a big mouth or like saying too much sort of get like a slap down in some type of a way that could be like maybe shaking our faith or our trust in us are shaking our faith or our trust in ourselves in some type of a way. And we do actually in this energy, because of the T-square, because of the projection, because of the black moon energy, probably want to be a little bit careful and watch what we're saying today generally. Maybe, you know, we really want to make sure that we are thinking before we speak, thinking before we act, not just, you know, taking some big impulsive action out of nowhere, hasty rash action. That's not really something that we want to do or just like saying whatever is coming out of our mouth and any type of like big and like boisterous or enthusiastic way with Mercury opposite Jupiter. This could also be a thing, but we, we sort of like just kind of want to watch that a little bit today. Watch what we say today. And also we don't want to be taking things too, too personally in this energy as well. As people are likely projecting as a result of this black moon energy, especially also 
right now with Mars in the sign of Gemini, there could be a lot of jealousy that is coming up in regards to these insecurities that are going on as well. So we don't really want to be taking too personally, you know, other people's issues. Say, so of course, we want to take constructive criticism as always if there is something in it that can benefit us, but we don't want to be overly attaching to other people's like ideas and judgments about us in this energy with these squares going on today. And remember, Mars is also right now still in a trine to Mercury as well. We're coming out of this past week that was just this infusion of this Mars, Mercury, Jupiter energy. So again, we do want to sort of make sure that we are thinking before we are speaking and we are not just like jumping all into something before we are, you know, sure that that is the right choice that we want to make at this point in time. This is a period of time like... We are being shown the truth about things this cycle, you guys, this month. We are being shown the truth. We are gaining some type of clarity. We are gaining some type of awareness that is really going to be changing our mind about something and helping us to make some type of decision or take some type of decisive action. But with all of this retrograde energy and this Mercury, Venus, mutual reception, fusion energy going on right now, like... We've still got quite a bit of considering and reconsidering, reevaluating left to do before we are going to be ready to really see things the way that they need that we need to in order to make these decisions and really move forward. That's kind of coming more towards the end of this month, but we are being primed in this energy for it now. Anyways, the last thing that I want to talk about today is the moon in Capricorn is also going to be forming a trine to the sun in Virgo, like I said, and because of the placements of things right now, we'll also be moving into a trine with the north node and Uranus, which is a very harmonizing energy, um, and this is going to be happening. So today and tomorrow, this energy is sort of like what we're dealing with as this trine comes into effect. Also, actually, for the full moon itself, this is going to be in a trine with Uranus as well all week really we have some energy that is working to tangibly physically like rectify things in some type of way there may be some like real changes on the ground in our life physically happening throughout the course of this week with this earth sign energy these earth sign trines playing out and this full moon energy that is coming in earth signs um things may be happening to bring things into a better alignment or they may seem to be changing for the better or falling into place at this point in time, which they are, you guys, which they actually are. If you guys have been following along with our new moon in Virgo cycle and the month of September overview, this cycle really has a lot to do with like bridging things back together, like bringing things to a resolution, bringing, rebalancing the skills, like restoring justice, like bringing peace and harmony back to where there has been like division and like schism and polarities going on within us or within our relationships and the circumstances in our lives in some type of way. But, you know, it's happening through this breakdown process that is ultimately coming to some place of like higher resolution. That is the energy that is in effect all month long. And again, you know, it's really being emphasized by the Uranian energy that we have coming in in the trine as we're moving through this week as well in the context also of the Mercury retrograde energy that we have going on. It's like now we really need to make some reevaluations in terms we were learning a lot and now we really need to apply that in terms of what it is that we truly want, what it is we truly, you know, desire, what we value, what we prioritize and the types of relationships and financial connection, financial situations that we want to have going on in our lives. So Things are changing for the better, you guys. We are entering, though, a period of some necessary adjustments coming up with Mercury going retrograde this week. And um, let's talk about the Sabian symbols for just a second. Venus and Mercury today in their mutual reception. Venus moving to one degrees of Virgo. That Sabian symbol is in a portrait. The significant features of a man's head are artistically emphasized. And Mercury ruling the head, right, ruling the mind at eight degrees of Libra, a blazing fireplace in a deserted home. So these Sabian symbols in combination for Venus and Mercury coming into mutual reception today, I feel like this is helping us to discover or rediscover where we've abandoned ourselves, where we've abandoned our passion, where we've abandoned the truth of our heart. That is the process that we are on right now. We are on a journey and a mission to rediscover the authentic truth of our heart, what really brings us that sense of fulfillment on that soul level. What makes us feel alive? What helps us to thrive? What makes us feel full inside to the point where we are like spilling over and able to contribute and to serve and to like 
can give because we have so much access within us. That is what life is the universe is trying to bring us into a position, into a understanding of, into a resonance with at this point in time so that we can really begin to create that, magnetize that, attract that to ourselves in our lives going forward. And this 222 year, you guys, this is a very rare uh, numerological year that we are in right now in our transitional process into the age of Aquarius. And it really is about reharmonizing frequencies and energy within us in a way that helps us to magnetize and attract that which is a reflection of what feeds our our heart what feeds our soul and that is i also what i feel like this energy and these symbols and this mercury venus at this point in time is also trying to help us discover and bring to us as we are going through this retrograde period and things are simultaneously falling into place i mean uranus this is a great awakener so this is a cycle of awakening to the truth of our heart on a cognitive level and then moving towards the libra cycle you guys we're going to start taking some action to actually make that happen manifest make some decisions that move our life in a direction that is feeding that within us that we are discovering now. So um, that is basically what I have to say about the astrology that we have playing out today, you guys. Should be a busy week. Um, and again, there may be some things from the past coming up this week, and you may really find yourself sort of wanting to like isolate, process some things, and you know, really sort of reconsider what it is that we want, that you want at this uh, point in time. Now let's talk about some tarot cards, you guys. We had some tarot cards, of course, coming out of the deck this morning to uh, help illustrate our astrology that we have going on. God, spirit, universe, give me some symbolism to you know, explain in another way what is playing out on the ground right now. We've got an interesting sequence of cards coming out, you guys, but they ultimately are spelling out the same thing that all of this energy has been leading to. These cards, this message is really also describing like this process of like awakening and this awareness that we are gaining, you know, this week and moving throughout the month of September that is freeing us in some type of a way to return to what, what did that say? The um, blazing fireplace in a deserted home. This is this tarot message as well is talking about us committing to the awakening process essentially and this being the sort of shift that transitions us out of any state of victimhood or state of lack that we may have been experiencing and you know also this black moon energy and reinvigorating us bringing us to this place of self-empowerment that really rebalances things for us so the first card that we had coming out of the deck today is the hierophant this you know card has a lot of meanings but this is also this is this is like the high priest right this is like um the holy man this is a very strong connection to god and spirit and it also represents commitment in a lot of cases so i feel like with the hierophant coming out first this is talking about in this case a commitment to our faith and then the next card that we had coming out after that you guys was the star this is about having hope. This is about, this is also the card of the age of Aquarius and this energetic shift back in alignment with the truth of our authenticity that is going on within us right now. This is a recalibrating that frequency in alignment with the truth of our authentic potential and our spiritual growth. But it's also about inspiration. It's about hope. And with these two cards together, I feel like this is saying that we really need to be collectively and also being these major arcana cards. Like it's very important that we are maintaining hope and that we are like exercising a commitment to our faith right now because that is one aspect of um that that is one like energetic uh necessity I guess we could say at this point in time in order to five of cups to free our with the eight of swords on the back of the deck as well to free our mind in a way that brings us out of any type of place of lack or fear or feeling rejected or victim mentality in any type of a way we got the queen of wands coming out next followed by the six of pentacles this is really, and then like I said, we had the eight of swords on the back of the deck, followed by actually the six of wands victory 
after that. This is this is actually like a very, very clear message to me. Commitment to our faith, hope and awakening, self-confidence, passion, loyalty to what's in our heart and our right to receive and express our heart's true desires is what frees us, rebalances things and helps us to overcome this victim mentality. This to me, this message is talking about us being in a process right now. And especially it makes sense with this black moon energy coming up right now as well. And again, we've got the six of pentacles going on here. The six of pentacles, this card has been coming up a lot lately as we've been going through this period of time that is trying to rebalance things and restore justice to things that have been out of balance or that have been just unfair in any type of a way. But this message, like this is specifically saying with the queen of wands here as well, this is telling me that like, Having this commitment to our faith and allowing ourselves to like really be like inspired by the spiritual connection, by this higher perspective, by this like divine inspiration that may be coming through us in some type of a way, like allowing that to become like our source of self empowerment to restore our sense of self confidence to, you know, this to me is talking about like us waking up also like the star of Aquarius or the, the star like Aquarius, like the need, the significance, the importance of waking up to the queen of wands, to the truth of our own power, to our passions, to our heart, to what really fuels us and our ability to receive that which we really love and that which we're really passionate about, this divine feminine fire energy so that we can create as well. It's a very, very creative energy. Like that's what this is talking about. Like there is this process of being able to rediscover the fire within us. Again, that Mercury degree, a blazing fireplace in a deserted home, and then Venus in a portrait that significant uh, features of a man's head are artistically emphasized. It's like this need to like mentally recognize like where we've been abandoning ourselves, where we've been abandoning our passion, where like what it is that we truly love, what it is that we truly desire, what makes us feel inspired, what makes us feel passionate, what makes us feel creative, what makes us feel um, just in this place of like courage and faith in ourselves and confidence and self-empowerment. Like this ability to receive this awakening or to receive this divine inspiration or to like have this restored faith and trust and belief in ourselves based on the recognition of these qualities and characteristics. Like this is freeing us, you guys. This is rebalancing things for us. And this is moving us away from anywhere we've been cast out or felt victimized or felt rejected. Like there, you can't, the queen of wands, like the queen of wands is not rejected. Like the queen of wands is the queen, okay? Like there's no rejection here and everything has to be balanced. And even when we're talking about a queen of wands and her power and, you know, there's victory that is all ultimately coming through this process. And then we're talking about the Hierophant. We're talking about the star, this need to stay committed to our awakening process, to awakening to the truth of who we really are and feeling confident to stand in that and to like sit on our throne and to begin creating from that place. That is what is going to free us from any type of mental prison that we've been in or simultaneously, it could be this awakening that's coming through based on these spiritual truths we might be arriving at that are, that is freeing us to come back into our power. But either way, it's taking us from this five of pentacles to the six of pentacles, which is going from this state of victimhood, feeling cast out, feeling rejected, feeling not good enough to this place of reciprocity, scales being rebalanced, justice being restored and things being fair. And again, the six of we've got the six of pentacles and the six of wands. This is, you know, writing things leading to some type of victory or putting things right or putting us back on top in some type of a way. So that is what uh, the cards are talking about today in the context of the astrology. And again, there is this theme of gaining some type of crucial awareness, some type of crucial awakening that is reminding us or helping us to rediscover the blazing, what, what is it? I keep forgetting the blazing fireplace in our deserted home, like where we have been abandoning that, which really makes us thrive, makes us feel alive, brings us back to life, gives us purpose, and just really brings us that sense of fulfillment and like that burning 
desire to live and to create and to experience. So that is what is trying to be restored to us in this energy, you guys. And as long as we are able to commit ourselves to that process, to our awakening and, you know, not hide from it, not be afraid of it, like marry ourselves, the Hierophant, like marry ourselves to our own inspiration, our own hope, our own awakening process and restoring this fire within us. Like that is going to liberate us and put us back on top in one way or another. And again, like that is what this entire cycle is trying to do for us as well. Let's grab one more card now, you guys, a synchronicity card. We actually just had two flip over in the deck. So we're going to use both of them. These are just little messages from God to give us a little bit more, you know, guidance as we are navigating our, our day today, as we are starting our week. And the cards that came out says, say, God's the boss and watch your thoughts, both very relevant in this energy. Watch your thoughts, looking diligently, lest any man fail of the grace of God's Hebrews 12, 15. Be diligent and watchful over your thoughts. Let God's spirit guide you and direct you. Continue moving forward. Victory will be yours which is validating exactly what the tarot message just said. Victory will be yours. But again, watch your thoughts. The Eight of Swords in reverse. We have the Eight of Swords in reverse, followed by the Six of Wands. This is talking about a need to free ourselves from any type of negative thinking, subconscious programming. Again, the Eight of Swords in reverse, coming up with the Five of Pentacles today. This is talking about any type of negative self-sabotaging mental energy, toxic self-talk, negative self-talk, thought loops, thought patterns, subconscious programming that we may not in the shadow side energy, black moon energy, even realize is necessarily going on or is necessarily there, but that is actually what is holding us hostage in any state of victimhood or state of lack as a, in like state of imbalance or unfairness. It's because we're not taking hold of our own fire. Like we're not standing in our own power and we need to recognize that. And that is really what is going to alleviate that. But this card is saying we need to watch our thoughts in the process because again, like we don't want to be creating this five of pentacles energy for ourselves based on our own perception, which is, con which like based on, you know, this, this negative mental energy, which is translating into like negative physical experiences because that's how it works. And then it says, the next card, God's the boss. Who then is that faithful and wise steward? Luke 12, 42. You must do your job joyously and faithfully in the knowledge that God is your boss. Your subconscious will then respond and promote you and remove obstacles to your success. Have a constructive vision, be faithful to your vision, show respect for authority, and you will be prospered along all lines. And with the Hierophant coming out first, you guys, this authority and the star, like that's what I, that's literally what I said, a commitment to our faith. And then this is saying God's the boss and it's talking about your subconscious conscious, which is uh, this black moon energy, which I had just been talking about. Your subconscious will then respond. Know that God is your boss. This is saying to me, like exactly like I said, commitment to our faith. And that is what frees us. This is this. These synchronicity messages are exactly describing what came out in the tarot today. It's this commitment to the faith and trusting that God, you know, is removing these obstacles. Your subconscious will then respond and promote you, remove obstacles to your success, have a constructive vision, be faithful to your vision, show respect for authority, and you will be prospered. Like that is what the tarot message is saying as well. We get out of this lack mentality or these negative circumstances this week and today and in this energy by realizing or surrendering to the divine, standing in our commitment to our faith, realizing that God is the boss. And <laughs> this is the energetic shift that universe is indicating is necessary this week in order to facilitate our process and help remove obstacles to our success. So watch your thoughts, you guys. God is the boss. Commitment to our faith. That is what is coming through today. Message from the stars, message from the cards. I hope you guys liked it. I hope I was able to provide something for you that can give you just a little bit of whatever you're needing as you're navigating this energy today. If you guys did like this video, please give me a big thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel. Share it with your friends if you think they would like this and be interested 
interested in this type of astrology content too, leave me comments, you guys. I really, truly, I really, uh, really appreciate your comments. I am so grateful for each and every one of you. Thank you guys so, so much for being here. I have a Facebook page, a Facebook group, a website, and some other social media stuff. Those are in my description box below. And come back with me on Wednesday, you guys. I'm not going to be making a video for tomorrow for Tuesday. I've got some things I need to catch up on. I have some things going on and tomorrow is not a super significant day. We will be in more black moon energy. The moon will conjunct Pluto. There may be some power struggles going on, but for the most part, there's nothing uber super significant happening tomorrow. More of this mutual reception energy and we can kind of take what's going on today and apply it to tomorrow as well since the moon will still be in Capricorn. So brief little rundown for tomorrow and um, I will be back on Wednesday, you guys, and on Wednesday, we will have a grand trine in air signs to talk about some major problem solving energy coming in as Mercury is preparing to go retrograde. So I'll be here. You should be here too, you guys. You don't want to miss it. And I will see you then. Have a beautiful day, everybody. And until next time, bye guys.